This is the second screencast for Arts One, uh, talking about how to set up your blog. So at this point you have set up your blog, meaning you've uh, registered with UBC Blogs and you've actually got a blog going. That's what I'm hoping. Um, by the time you watch this, you have done that. And now we are going to talk about just a couple of things um, that you'll need to know in order to manage your blog well. First of all, this is our main Arts One seminar site, and I wanted to point out what's going to happen with your blog posts. So here's a blog post that I did, a very short one <laughs> earlier today, just noting a podcast on Eve in uh, Genesis. And here's a post by Michaela, I think, who is, who is syndicated user? Yeah, Michaela. Um, she's set up her blog and it is now going into the site and here it is uh, and a couple of you have also done so as, as well and I haven't uh, actually put them in yet um, I don't know why it's saying syndicated user here because it sure would be nice if it actually gave the author um, I'm gonna see what I can do about that see here this one does give the author and that one doesn't and I'm not sure why I'll see if I can fix it. I also want to point out that on the blog posts as they show up on this site, the comments are off. And that is because I don't want people to comment on this site. I want people to actually go to the blog posts on the original sites and comment there because then the authors can moderate those comments and reply to those comments. If they're here on this site, then people may not even know they, the comments exist. Okay. So I'm going to log in. This is one way you can get into your site. You can either just go to UBC blogs, uh, I'm sorry, blogs.ubc.ca and log in there, or you can log in through your site itself through the login um, section. And I'm going to go to our Arts One seminar site and show you some things that you'll need to do to make comments uh, easier to deal with. All right. First of all, you'll want to go to settings and then discussion. My computer fan is uh, turning on, so it's going to be a little loud. Sorry about that. All right. I mean, you can leave most of these as default. Um, I think these are all good defaults. Uh, I'm not sure what the default is on here, but I think comment author must fill out name and email is a good thing because what you're going to find after a while is that you're going to get a lot of spam. And um, and also you really want someone to actually say who they are um, before commenting. It's, it's, you know, you can sometimes get some not so nice comments and of course people could fill out a fake name if they want to. Um, but this might help with spam a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't click users must be registered and logged in to comment because that would mean that, that nobody who isn't logged into UBC Blogs can't comment, which doesn't seem nice to me. You can choose whether you want to close comments on old articles. Um, yeah. This one is really important. Email me whenever anyone posts a comment because otherwise you may forget to check your blog and you won't even know that there's a comment there and a comment is held for moderation. I think both of those are important and I'll tell you about moderation now. Next thing, before a comment appears, an administrator must always approve the comment. I really highly uh, recommend this because um, again, you might start getting a bunch of spam comments and if you don't moderate those, you're just gonna get, I mean, I, I get hundreds a day. It's on my other blog, it's really nasty. In fact. I have to go check those all the time or else they pile up. Um, so if you just let them go, they will just post. So I would say you must always approve the comment. You'll get an email and then you can decide whether you want to approve it or not. I'm not actually sure what this second um, checkbox does, but I think if you don't check this one, then as long as somebody has a previously approved comment, then you don't have to approve their comment. But honestly, I'm not really sure if that one, if you've got both of these checked, I'm not really sure what that means. Um, maybe if the comment author has a previously approved comment, then you don't have to moderate it, but I don't think so because this says always. All right. Um, you can choose whether you want to show avatars or not. Um, yeah. Okay. 
then of course be sure to do save changes, but I haven't changed anything, so I'm not gonna save it. The next thing that's really useful to do is to add a plugin. So you go to plugins, plugins, and there's a plugin called, there's a bunch of these and, and most of them you're not going to need, but um, there's one that's really useful for comments. It's called subscribe to comments. And what this does is that when somebody leaves a comment on your blog, it gives them a checkbox that they can check to, to say, please email me if a new comment or a reply arrives. Because sometimes you'll comment on someone's blog and you won't know that they've replied unless you go back and check and you may forget to do that. So it's really nice to, to have people have the chance if they want to, to be emailed when a reply happens and they have to, to check it or not. So it's up to them. So that's a really important one. Um, okay, so that, um, yeah. So that is it for comments, I believe. The next thing that I'd like to show you is um, how to upload media. And I don't really have anything um, here ready. But let's say, okay, I'm just gonna do a test post uploading media. And what you wanna do, if you wanna add, say, a, um, a file on your computer, like a Microsoft Word document, a PDF, um, you can do that through this add media button. And you can select, you know, practically anything. So it's one, Paper topics. Oh no, I can't give you that yet. Sorry. <laughs> the syllabus. Um, that's kind of boring. The blog posts uh, file. Okay, so you can choose something from your computer. Then you have to check um, the copyright authorization. So is it with the permission of the copyright holder? Well, if you created it, then it is with your permission. Then you click that if it's in the public domain, and that would be something that um, is, is oh gosh, I'm not sure what the Canadian law is, but it has it probably has to be at least 100 years old <laughs> and not a translation that's less than 100 years old. Or it says, I have put this into a public domain. Or um, perhaps uh, it's something with a Creative Commons license, which we can talk about a little bit more um, in class or perhaps on a screencast. And a Creative Commons license says, I hold the copyright to this thing, but I'm allowing you to use it for certain purposes, in which case you would check with the permission of the copyright holder. Um, so just for fun, let's uh, just add in, um, let's see, the syllabus. It's very boring. With the permission of the copyright holder, upload. I just wanna show you how to do this. Um, so I'll just add this boring one. So this is the title of the file and if you want it to, to say something different in your post, you can say, all right, it's one syllabus, fall 2013, give it a different title. You can give it a caption, but that doesn't really make sense for a, for a document. Um, don't worry about any of this. Don't worry about any of that, click insert into post. If you click save all changes, like that's fine, but it doesn't actually insert it into your post. It saves it into another part of the site. Like insert into post and voila, there it is. So when you publish this post and people click on that, it'll actually download that uh, document. The other thing you might want to do is embed, um, let's say something from YouTube. So, um, what should I embed? Let me go to, yeah, we'll introduce John Beasley Murray. Why not? So how you embed something from YouTube is go to share and embed, copy this, and then it's a little bit tricky. You have to go back to your post, go to text, go down here and paste. Say, I'm gonna save the draft. 
Now, that's because this is an HTML code that you have to go to text, which is where you add and you edit in HTML. If you put that stuff into visual, let's see, I just did that. That's what's going to show up this on the site. So you have to put it into text. And you notice here when you're when you're editing it, you can't see it, which is kind of annoying. So let's just publish it for fun. I'm going to get rid of it later because it's just a test post and you'll be able to see what it looks like. If I visit site, and there it is. It's, all, it's embedded, that's lovely. So this allows people to go see it on YouTube, to watch it full screen, or you can just watch it here. Um, and then let's say uh, I was just visiting and wanted to click on this link and it's gonna open um, this thing with Microsoft Word. So that's a nice thing you can do for um, videos. Um, let's see, what else might you want to upload? Oh, you know, you might want to upload a new header image. So you go to appearance, header, and this gives you the image that you've got on there, which I found from uh, Flickr. And it has a Creative Commons license, which allows me to uh, use this with attribution. So long as I give the, the author and where it came from and the license that is attached to it. There are some default images that are given with the theme, um, but most people use those. So I'd, I'd like to try to pick something else. I mean, this isn't really like related to our seminar. I just thought it was kind of pretty. <laughs> I was thinking I should find something about remaking and remodeling and perhaps I will, but uh, I have not had time yet. Um, right, so you can choose the text color of the title of your blog there and save changes if you've changed anything. Uh, I think that is all that I'm going to show you right now. Um, yeah, I believe that's enough for now. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. Perhaps I'll do another screencast on Creative Commons and finding Creative Commons images to use in your blog because you don't want to just take anything from the web. It may or may not be allowable for you to use in a public space without attributing. Oh, then one last thing. Let me show you the attribution I have for this image. So unfortunately on this theme, you have to scroll all the way down. I think I may move that. I can put it on the sidebar, but here's the header image. This is the link to the actual picture. Here's the person who took it and here's the license that it is given by. So whenever you use a picture or a, a video um, that that is copyrighted by somebody else, but they're allowing you to use it as long as you attribute them, you need to make sure that somewhere either on the post or on the site itself, that attribution is there. Now with a video like on YouTube, um, if it's embedded, that's okay. You don't have to cite it because basically you are citing it. You are attributing it. It's it's there. People can click on the link to get it to YouTube. So that's that's fine. All right. That's it for now. I will see you in class.